Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these lipstick tag treats. These were requested by my viewers when I showed how to make the boxes the other day. They said, please make the tag treats as well. So these, these stand up, kind of stand up like that. And that's what's really nice about them. They're a great Valentine's Day gift. And you can also make other variations of these, which I'll show you in a little bit. So this kind of started out, it didn't, I didn't know it was going to be a series, but I started out showing how to cut out the lipstick the other day using the scan and cut and how to layer it. And then I was asked, I showed how to make the boxes and then I showed how to make boxes with the scan and cut. And now I was asked, can you show how to make this little tag treat? Super, super easy. So I'm using, I'm going to tell you all the materials I'm using. I'm using, this is a piece of From My Heart Designer Series paper by Stampin' Up. You can still get this. It's limited edition, meaning it's going on just during our spring catalog. It's called the 2020 spring catalog. So there'll be a link if you want a catalog. Please give me your mailing address if you're in the U.S. and you want a catalog. Okay, and I'm going to turn it around and show you the back of these. All, all of our designer series papers are double-sided. Well, not all, but, but most are double-sided. This is double-sided. Okay, so there's patterns. And the way you orient the pattern matters for your treats. Okay, so we'll cut a, we'll cut a couple of these at once because I still have lots of treats to make. All the original treats I made are gone. Okay, we'll use this we'll use this piece here, and we'll get a we'll get a shiny piece as well. So we'll use these two pieces. Okay, so what I do is I cut a couple at once of the designer series paper. We're going to cut the two inch by nine inch pieces, but knowing that the paper is twelve by twelve. And I'm one of those people that mass produces crafts because I do a lot of craft fairs and things. I'm going to just lop off three inches to begin with because if I take, if I were to take a 12 by 12 piece now and then cut off a three inch piece and a three inch piece each time, I, I might not have a big enough scrap to do anything with. So let's just take your 12 by 12 piece in the, in the first place and cut off three inches. So then we can make a bunch of these two inch ones. So let me show you what I mean. First, I need the design for what I'm making here to be oriented this way. So let's let's make sure we're, so there are the hearts oriented that way, that's perfect. So I'm gonna cut off this part, three inches. So I'm gonna turn the paper and cut off three inches. And let's see if this orientation matters. Yes, it does. So we'll put the hearts like that, it matters. And we're gonna cut off three inches. So now I'm gonna use my paper trimmer. This is our new paper trimmer, not that new, came out a few months ago. And it, what I like about our paper trimmer is it has an arm that comes out so you can so it's portable okay and I'm going to open up the arm and I'm going to cut off three inches not from this side but from this side because then I'm going to have a big nine inch strip nine by twelve so to cut off three inches I'm going putting the paper through I'm doing two at once I only do two at once some people say you can do four at once but I I only have good success with two at once and I've gone through a lot of blades but that's because I do paper shares and things and I'm always cutting trimming lots of paper but you know your blade lasts a very long time and it's it cuts like butter it's really nice okay so I'm gonna cut now also our trimmer comes with a scoring tool a scoring blade or a, not really a scoring blade but a scoring but because I cut so much paper I took that off because it was getting in my way so now I have a three inch piece that I can use for something but whereas if I would have cut out two by three inch pieces they'd have been hard to use later so I have those scraps now this is our this is our project we're doing so this is how I roll I would make all of these at once I would make all my two inch pieces sometimes I like to put the foil side up just to sharpen my blade a little because I don't know if it works but hey I think it works when I sharpen my actual blade <laughs> of my scan and cut or my other machines I use aluminum foil so sometimes I just put my foil side up and it helps me sharpen my blade or at least I think it does okay so I'm gonna put this I'm making two inches here put the paper together but you don't want it to slip apart and I'm gonna cut two inch pieces and I'll show you that a little bit closer in just a second so let's do two at once okay that's two inches there you're basically to get the two inches you're covering the two inches and you have to make sure these papers are together okay so like I said my advice is to, the way you get a lot more done is just to do everything in stages so you're gonna cut all your paper um, you're gonna score all your paper. You could score it again with this with the scoring tool attached to the trimmer, but I'm like gonna use another tool called Simply Scored because that's what I like to use. Simply Scored is, okay, now that I have my last cut, 
I'm going to bring this closer so you can see the numbers on my on my trimmer just so you see what I mean when I want to when I want to cut two these are in quarter inch increments right when I want to cut at the two inch mark I have to cover the number two because there's the two inch see and yet the long line is the two inch and I just don't want your measurements to be wonky and these are things that you know you learn the hard way but anyway, I'm gonna go up and the blade goes either way so it goes up and down so there are all my pieces now I have you know two four six eight ten and I have those big strips left over paper oh no twelve I have twelve I don't know how come I can't do the math when you have all kinds of options you can orient the paper either way so there those are now very important I'm gonna show you my punches but don't you don't punch it because if you try to punch now if I, if I were to punch now, then the paper wouldn't score at the right spot because the punch lops a little bit off of the top of the paper. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take out my Simply Scored. If you're doing a lot of scoring, it, it, there are these little markers that you can use. And so it helps you to remember. So if I'm doing a lot, like I'm going to be using two and seven eighths, right? I'll move those away so you can see the measurements better. And three and five eighths. All my measurements are in the description of this video. Please read my blog, look at the descriptions. I get asked over and over again, or come to my Scan and Cut user group and, and you know you can ask questions there, but you wouldn't believe how many times I get asked the same question over and over again. All right, so here's what I need to show you. Let's put these here. Uh, yeah, okay, so we have our paper oriented the right way. Here's what I need to show you. So you have your, you're about to score, but you're gonna be using, let me find the treat. There's a long side, this is the long side, this is, so this part here is gonna be what's showing. So you orient the paper like this because this part is showing through your treat. Whereas this part's gonna be hidden. This part's hidden. And so it's double-sided paper, so this side's gonna be hidden, like right there. You're gonna be hiding it with the, be as bold as your lipstick. You know, be as bold as your lipstick. So that's why you orient the paper this way when you score. Okay, so now I'm gonna score, and you can do a few at once, score a few at once. Two and seven eighths. Again, I'm not editing this video to put, you know, text captions in the video. You have to look at the description, folks. Look at my blog, thepaperchef.com, because for me to edit this video, I won't get it out in time for Valentine's Day. <laughs> so that's just how it is. Okay, so I did two and seven eighths and three and five eighths. I'm gonna just um, do those again a little bit closer for you, but let me just kind of fold them. So you're gonna fold along the score lines just a little bit. Don't worry that that one's upside down because this is gonna be hidden. In this case, I'm gonna let that part shine through. And in this case, this part's gonna be the background. So whenever you have double-sided paper, those are just things, you know, to, oh, I like that one better. I like that better to show the hearts back there. And then, and then this one. Okay, so in this, from my Heart Designer Series paper, there are only three coordinating colors, just three, and it's, Flirty Flamingo, Real Red, and Whisper White. And that's it, and some foil. Okay, so that's that's pretty cool. All right, now, what do I have to show you? I'm gonna show you this a little bit closer. Let's take another strip. Let's do this one. We'll put that one in, that one this time, that'll be in the background. But I still want the hearts to be facing up in the, when they look at the back of the treat. Actually, no, I'm gonna just do it that way. I change it, my mind as I go. But what I wanna show you now is I'm gonna take these little markers away so you can really see the score lines. And I'll do this closer and I'll kind of hold it up to my camera. I know some of my crafty friends bought this and I wanna make sure that you know that that is the two. Even though the two is over this little line, the long one is the two, you know, the, the long one's the three. Okay, so I want two and seven eighths. This is broken up into eighths of an inch. So I want, you know, seven eighths of an inch, meaning right before the three, the one where the three is above it, that's where I'm gonna score. And when you have the scoring tool, you have a big side and a small side. I use the small side mostly. The big side I use if you're making flowers, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's what I'm scoring. And then three and five eighths. That's three and a half, because there's a big line. So that's four eighths, you know, a half. One, two, three, four. Four and four eighths is a half. Five eighths, there. Okay, that's what works. It makes your lipstick stand up. You want this tight, you want this little region tight. Your lipstick's going to stand up in there. When I say lipstick, I'm talking about a lipstick pen. <laughs> Not an actual lipstick, although they look very similar. 
And these have been super popular. People are coming to visit me and like taking them with them and when, <laughs> when they go and I'm giving them out as random acts of kindness. And I mean, people are, have been loving these. A little story is a friend came to visit me and she said, um, oh, my friends teach cosmetology. And she's like, you know, I, I need these for my friends for to teach cosmetology. <laughs> so, I mean, like to be as bold as your lipstick. I mean, how cool, right? I, I didn't, hadn't even thought of that. I was just giving them to girly girls, but of course that's a great use for these too. All right, so now we have it folded and now I'm gonna talk about the punches. Okay, so here are the punches. So I'm using the three quarter inch punch by Stampin' Up, but it's retired. So I'll give you a different link to how you can find this punch somewhere else. Okay, and then here's the, this one is definitely a punch I use all the time. I mean, I've used it thousands of times and it's still sharp. We have this right now at Stampin' Up, Delightful Tag Topper Punch. Okay, so one of the things you can do is you can use it, there's a little scalloping going on over here. You can use it for both sides. Like I can use it for this side if I want, but you don't have to. It looks cute if you don't use the scallop there, but definitely you need it for the top part. This, this scallop tag topper, I mean, not scallop. We have another punch called scallop. Delightful tag topper punch. Okay, links to the all the materials I'm using are in the description. So let's go like that. Push it all the way in. And if you're not sure it's all the way in, turn it over and look, okay? Or if you want to sit at your, if you don't want to use the table and you're sitting at your sofa doing this, turn it over when you're doing it to make sure that your paper is in there straight, okay? Like that and squeeze it. But if you're, if you're just doing it at the table, sometimes I push it in and it's already it has a two inch guide there. And then I turn it over to make sure. And then I go like this and I punch. And you could punch two at once, but I don't recommend it. My punches have been jammed before. So now I'm going to show you what I would do with this circle punch. And then I know I have a lot of scan and cut users on here, so I'll show you how to cut out the circle. If you don't want to get the punch from the link I give you, then, you know, you I can show you how to do it with your scan and cut. So you put your punch, I'm going to put the three quarter inch punch in there. And of course it'll be different if you get a different model of punch, maybe it won't go into the same exact distance. That's why I'll show you where you would do it with your scan and cut. Save that circle. We'll need that in a minute. And what else? We're going to... I'm gonna punch it like this. So you can punch the side. It just looked cute. I did it by accident the other day and I thought it ended up looking cute on my treat that way. All right, so we have the hole punched. And this is what I wanna do with that hole. <laughs> just, I'm gonna show you a scan and cut trick right now. The rest of you that don't have scan and cuts that are here for learning just how to make the treat, you have to be patient because this is cool. And maybe you're gonna see this and go, oh my goodness, I wanna scan and cut, you never know. So here we go. We're gonna take the, I'm taking this one and I'm taking this one. Um, I'm just lining up my, I just wanna make sure I put this right where it goes, where this, I'm putting this uh, circle there. Just to show you on the machine where it goes. So I'm gonna take a little, a little, what's that called, a dimensional. Sticking that circle in there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick this on my scan and cut right now. And I'm going to see where that circle would line. Okay, brought the machine closer. We are going to turn on your scan and cut. I'm using the CM350, but it really doesn't matter which model you use. Go to pattern. Create yourself a circle. Because again, this we're doing this if you don't have a punch and you don't want to buy one. Okay, click on this circle. And we're going to make a three quarter inch circle. And I mean, not only you might not want to buy one, it might be hard for you to use punches. Maybe you have arthritis or punches are hard to use or maybe you don't have room to store all the punches and that's the reason you got a scan and cut so let's just do this this is just a little trick for you okay so we're going to add the three quarter inch circle now we're, we're going to i'm just putting that back on the mat i had to move it a little bit from the top so don't put it too close to the top of the mat don't even put your treat too close to the edge of the mat you'll see why because the edges of the mat don't really scan in so what i'm going to do now is background scan Click on background scan and start. Okay, we're going to take this circle and we're gonna place it over the top of that circle that we just punched out. And we can even, we can even uh, zoom in there and make sure it's lined up. Zoom in some more. It looks to be, let's go over here. 
our three quarter inch circles lined up good with the circle there. Okay, and then you could put some little tape on your mat wherever you put this treat and you could line up your treat and you could, I'm just gonna say okay, okay, and we're gonna cut out the little circle, pull off the little, let's see if this works, pull off the little circle that we put the glue dot on and cut. I'm just cutting out a circle. So this is instead of a punch. Should have lined up pretty good. Yes, it did. Okay, so let's, and again, I just thought of this, you know, just to help those of you, because I realized the punch is retired when I was doing this tutorial. Well, I didn't realize, I realized that before, but then I thought I better show this. So here's what I'm saying. So you have maybe some washi tape or something, and you could, you could just make yourself a little, put a little piece of tape there and know where you're putting this template and then you can punch out all your circles that way. And because you, you can't put it too close to the edge because the edge doesn't get recognized. Anyway, then what I'm saying is I would save this and make a bunch of treats at once. So save your little circle to your machine. It's saying I don't have enough memory, yada, yada. Okay, we're not, but this is not a scan and cut tutorial. So let's just move that away. Save it to your machine, retrieve it. And there you have it. So we use, we're using punches. I mean, it is a scan and cut tutorial. It kind of always turns into one, but you know what I'm saying. I'm trying to show you the punches. Now we'll get our lipstick, our lipstick pens. Okay, these are the lipstick pens. And uh, this is this is called lovely lip, or not, it's not called lovely lipstick. This matches my lovely lipstick. But they also have these in real red. See, the real red is gonna match the project I'm doing now. So I'm gonna take the real red pen, and I just wanna show you the inside of the pen. There's a link to these pens in the description. Oops, wrong way. <sighs> Let's open a pen. I think I'm only supposed to pull off the top. Yeah, I'm only supposed to pull up the top of the lipstick. Okay, there you go. So that's the pen. And we'll put this one back together real quick. It's no big deal. Because that's how I roll. I like to uh, just keep on rolling when I make a mistake because any of us can do it. I hope the spring is in there. I hope I didn't lose a spring somewhere. We shall find out if there was even a spring. Because I need this real red one before this project. Yeah, that's fine. There's no spring. Okay, so here we go. We have a pen. It looks a lot like lipstick. We're gonna put it in our treat holder, okay? So we now, I'm just gonna turn the camera down. We don't need to glue it in there or anything. It'll, it'll stay in there really nicely. Put some more. But you want to do this. This is the little trick. You wanna put the adhesive on here. Oh, and then I can, I'm just gonna do the punch on this one too. Yeah, punch that one. Okay, so we wanna put the adhesive on here. Now, before we put the the lipstick in there. So I can just use, you can use tear and tape. That's what I'm gonna use. Just this, this little, or you can use like snail adhesive, just some kind of rolling adhesive. I'll give you a better look at that. I like to change my camera angles and everything. I need to put some stuff in my camera because of all the crazy glare. I, I someday will, someday, I'm gonna be getting better lighting. <laughs> right now I'm on a shoestring budget. <laughs> okay, so let's peel that off. Now, so you get your adhesive ready. You know, you put your snail on it before you put your lipstick in there because you can't put it on once the lipstick's in your way. And you just peel that off. And you can use that little, we have a little take your pick tool. Helps you get the, the lipstick off of there. I'm gonna use a pink one too, pink one matches. We'll make one of these pink and one of these real red. But save the, the other hot pink, the light pink matches this. But save the hot pink one for when you're doing a different color of ink called Lovely Lipstick. All right, so here we go. So here I'm showing you this a little closer. See the adhesive? It's just on this part. And it doesn't matter if you put it on that dot or not because we're gonna cover that dot. So now I'm gonna stick the lipstick up through the hole. Okay, and I want it to kind of sit. Push it up all the way, but push it up enough where it sits. It's gonna sit on the little flat part of your treat. Okay, very important. But you're not gluing it to the bottom of your treat. You're gonna turn the treat around, and I'll show you this again. Focus that. You're gonna turn the treat around. Turn the treat around. There's a song that's kind of like that, right? All right, so you're gonna go like that, and you're gonna adhere it. How cool is that? And it stands up. Come on, stand up for me. It always stands up. Maybe not on this video, but there you go should stand up <laughs> but then we're going to help you stand it up a little better by oh i know why because it wasn't quite flat 
Put your lipstick flat. See? Do as I do, not as I say here. Put, you got to stand your lipstick flat before you adhere it. That's why it's not standing up. Because I had already given these away and I forgot, haven't made these recently. There you go. Perfect. Now it stands up. Okay, we're going to do that again and give you a little bit better of an angle. Okay, so we're going to, we have our adhesive already on there. And so here's the better angle we're going to show. So I have this little holder. I'm sticking the, the pen up in there. And it's going to be flat along the bottom. See? It's flat because that's because that's how we scored it. And that was a lot of experimentation. We're going to stand it on the table. Okay, stand it on the table. And adhere it. Okay, we're going to push this up a little bit. Come on. There. And you kind of, I'm just squeezing. And you didn't have to do, you didn't have to put that little, you didn't, you could have just used a flat side. You didn't have to use the tag on both sides. How cool is that? So it stands up. All right, so now crafty friends, I have a couple more tips and then we're done. So I'll show you a couple more projects. So the tips are, the tips are this. So that looks good and it stays together well because this is tear and tape and it just, you know, you can rub it. Okay, rub it. Okay, so now, the, but, but it still kind of flops over. So one thing you can do is take a dimensional, take a mini dimensional, and you can add it to the back of your lipstick, just like that, on this part, just kind of hiding your lipstick. See? And it's, then, it, then it really stands up because you put that little, you know, you put that in there. And it doesn't even need to stand up because it's a tag treat. So it's kind of like you're giving it to somebody. The point of this tag tree is not that it stands up. The point is that they can see the gift that you're giving them. And they're going to put it, at, you're going to watch. You give this out at your office and your friends are going to be standing it on their desk. You're going to walk by later and they're going to say, that's so cute. And it's going to be standing on their desk or else they're going to be regifting it because it's so cute. Okay, so that's, that's the tag tree. Lastly, little finishing touches because we want it to turn into this, right? We want it to be like that. So your finishing touches are... You, you have lipstick that I showed how to cut out with the scan and cut. So you cut out stamped images. And I recommend you don't color the top until later. What do I mean by that? I have the blends. Because you're not sure, like maybe you're not sure how you're going to use these in projects, right? So these are my stamp and blends. Put this over here. And this is, uh, these are colors that coordinate with that. Flirty Flamingo, Real Red, and Smoky Slate. Smoky Slate coordinates with everything. So I have a bunch of these cut out stamped images, but I don't color the tops of the lipstick until later, until I know what project I'm gonna use it on. Because I need real red right now, and I'm gonna color it like this. Just, I put the, li the light real red in the top of the lipstick, and then the bottom of the lipstick, I mean the, the bottom of the top, huh? Okay, and this part, I'm just gonna use, that just kinda gives it a really cool look. And I'm not going to make you watch me color, but if you ever want to watch me color with the blends, I mean, request that. I do a lot of videos based on viewer requests. So here we are. So we have this. That's Now that's going to match our project. And I showed how to layer it with other coordinating paper. We showed, I showed this in the Scan and Cut tutorial. This is, this is Dark Flirty Flamingo right here. Dark Flirty Flamingo. This is Dark Smoky Slate, and that's Light Smoky Slate. So then what else did I do? I took the wink of Stella pen. So when your when your lipstick dries, you know, this is our little glitter pen. Again, all the materials are in the description. Don't do it while your alcohol marker is still wet. Do it, let your ink dry. Okay. And then when your ink's dry, you can do this little cool glittery effect on top of that. So that's pretty cool. And then I did Be As Bold As Your Lipstick, stamped that from this stamp set here called Dress To Impress. It's a great stamp set. It's in our 2020 mini catalog. That's where you get this. And it, again, make that match. So I'm using Real Red ink because you've Real Red here, Real Red. Real Red, Happy Valentine's Day. That came from Heartfelt stamp set. Again, a limited edition. You know, it's in the 2020 mini catalog. So if you like this, and even for next Valentine's Day, that's my favorite Valentine's sentiment right there because it came out so nice. And then I layered that. 
I did the first one with the scan and cut, the first heart, cut that out with the scan and cut. Then I layered it with punches in the back. And I layered this, I showed how to do this in my videos. So that's the whole entire project. No mystery there. I'll, I'll give you all the links, I mean not links, all the descriptions of this size circle, that size circle, and all the, all the scoring and cutting we just did. Okay, and lastly, oh, there's a ribbon and then I have a couple more projects from before I'll show you, or that I just made. So you take a ribbon about six inches, it's, or it's six inches that I was using, or any, you know, around about, and you loop it through. I'm using real red curly ribbon. This was in the holiday catalog. I think it carried over. If not, I carried it over. I had a lot of this ribbon, but just use real red ribbon because it coordinates, or flirty flamingo ribbon. I mean, use something that's gonna coordinate. And you loop it through, and that's your treat. That is how to make tag treats start to finish every step using our materials. Now. How we got to this point and how people started asking for it was they saw me make these other boxes, you know, and then they're like, can you make this treat too? So I showed how to make these boxes. This is, this is what I'm talking about by coordinating your colors. This is called the dress to, or best dress designer series paper. So this is layered and, but that's lovely lipstick color, which matches that, which matches the sentiment, lovely lipstick. See how the difference in the sentiments. When you match your colors and coordinate your colors, like Stampin' Up! allows you to do, you get some magic happening. And I'm gonna put a purple lipstick in this box along with some treats. See, purple lipstick in that box because it kind of matches the Blackberry Bliss color. And then you have, so I did boxes and lids. I showed how to do that with the Simply Scored tool. Then later I showed how to do it with the Scan and Cut. And that's a box example. And there's the pink lipstick. I showed how to cut these out with the Scan and Cut. More examples, uh, more boxes. Um, and they're in various stages of completion. Like this one's not complete yet. I still need to add my lipstick. I need to color the top of my lipstick and add it to match that one. So that's layered. Okay, so thank you for watching. This is the Paper Chef. And let me know what you think about this in the comments. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.